Today's guest speaker is founder of Parks Professional Group, a public speaking management consulting firm that's based here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, the firm has over 20 years of finance, leadership, and management development experience with expertise in banking, financial education, and business productivity. In 1991, Parks graduated from Arkansas Tech University, earning a bachelor's degree in economics and finance. With a 20-year career in commercial and investment banking, he accepted the position as Director of Development at Blinder Smith College in 2008. He's led the college in areas of major gifts, planned giving, annual giving, and governmental relations. Uh, his leadership has led the school to its most donations in major gifts and planned giving. His guidance has surpassed any, gift, any gifting amounts the campus has ever known, securing one million in two years in government, governmental appropriations. Impressive. Um, under Park's leadership, the college increased its annual participation rate of 4% in 2008 to 17% in 2012. Uh, PSC has received approximately $2 million in the past two years from various foundations that have embraced this mission. Thanks to Park's efforts, the institution has been successful in matching $300,000 challenge grant His interpersonal, and interpersonal skills led to promotions and positions of leadership and management where Parks continuously delivers measurable and profitable results. With his leadership qualities, he is an active community member in the state of Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ryan Parks. First off, good afternoon, uh, everyone. I will tell you, anytime I have the opportunity to be introduced, it, it's almost funny to me because I'm like, who are they talking about? <laughs> Let me give you the real introduction to Rodney Parks. 6'1", uh, struggling at 196, trying to get back in the gym, uh, workaholic, married with twin daughters. So all I have is just a little 12 by 12 room in my house that I call it my little man cave and now my daughters want to come in there and talk to me all the time and they want to know about the game so I don't have any place of refuge and I come to work and then there she reached here waiting on me but hey Rodney I got some questions I'm like it's so good to see you this morning but anyway that's me and a few things that uh, were discussed about uh, a little early about me yes those things are true but I have a long way to go and the good Lord has blessed me so far, but like I said, I, I think my best biography has yet to be written. So again, with all that said, thank you and so kindly for allowing me to be here with you. Uh, when I was asked to do this about, you know, having your back, what is it like to have someone's back? And I will tell you, if you ever get the privilege of having someone's back, it is one of the scariest things that can ever happen to you because you have to give confidence when at times you don't know truly if you can deliver exactly what you're stating that you're saying that you can do. There are times you know, when someone asks you questions that you really can't necessarily articulate a good answer for that individual for what they actually need. There's the things that you know and it's the way you have to articulate it to where someone else can grow, okay? And so when I talk about having someone's back, I always talk about leadership. And when I talk about leadership, there's a few things that I always discuss. It's one of the things I've been discussing re recently and it's called GPS. Everyone knows what GPS is, right? It's that little device on your car that tells you which way to turn to get here to come see me, right? No, I'm joking. Okay. That GPS system basically lets you know where you are on Earth at any particular moment, okay? Or if you have it on your phone, it lets your husband or your wife or your kids know exactly where you are. Leadership is kind of the same way. It's not just one thing. It is really, if you can imagine a huge circle, there are so many different spots you can be in that circle and still provide good leadership. Sometimes leadership is just great stewardship. You know how to say thank you all the time. Sometimes great leadership is knowing how to command and be in charge of a meeting. Be it Sunday school, be it into your home when you're having budgetary discussions. Leadership also could just show that you are a great follower or a great student, okay? That people will have trust in you. So GPS knowing how to grow, protect, and most importantly, share is something that I'd like to talk to you about today. Okay? Let's see if you got this one work. And it's not working. But that's okay. The first thing is, in the beginning of leadership, you gotta believe. You have got to believe. Now, there are two pictures of someone on this on, on this on this uh, canvas up here. 
The one on the left, excuse me, on your left, the one on the left is a snaggletooth nine-year-old, you know, who mother always likes him to wear shirt and ties. Okay? And on the right hand side is someone that uh, I think this picture was taken about three years ago. When I tell you that you got to believe, you got to believe wherever you are that this person can become this person. This person has to believe that he can become that person right there. Okay? That is leadership right there. Do you believe? Okay. The first thing I always ask people also is, which one of these individuals do you believe is, how do I say this? Which one of these individuals do you believe is the most important of these two? The actual product or the genesis? <coughs> Who says the genesis? Who says the finished product? There is no finished product. Good answer. There is no finished product in that particular regard. Regardless of where you are on the journey, in my case, let's just say nine years old. If you are 39 years old or even 49 years old, it does not matter where you are on the journey. That's why I said leadership is like a circle and you can go to different points in your journey as you go along, be it professional or personal. But do know this one thing. I can promise you the gentleman on the right always thinks about this young man right here. And no matter when he has some of his worst days, his worst days, he remembers that snaggletooth little kid who took this picture. I remember it was in Petty Jean Mountain. He says, I know who I am. I don't have front teeth. But anyway, <laughs> you got to know that. And I'm happy to say I got teeth now. <laughs> Let's talk about the G, okay? And it's not Gatorade. The G, grow. How do you grow leadership? There are three variables up here. I'm going to kind of just have a brief discussion about that you have to have our key components mm -hmm. of leadership on growing leadership. The first thing is value. The first thing is value. Now, that value is one big, vague, big word. What exactly do you mean when you say that? What I'm trying to tell you, just like that nine-year-old there, if you, don't know, if you do not know what value you bring to the table, if you have not ever had proper assessments of what tangible attributes you bring to the table, you put yourself in depth. You have to know what your personal and professional value is to yourself and to the organization or to the people that actually look towards you in order to have someone's back. Okay? Now, it is usually asked right here is, how can I determine what my value is if you don't know? Okay? Now, I will tell you, there are several different uh, things that you can take. First off, has anyone here ever heard of the Briggs and Stratton test? Okay? Those things are usually very good to help you understand your personality. But they even have um, very good tests that you can actually see where your particular value attributes are and what you're actually gifted at out there on those in, in, in the internet too. And if, if anyone wants my contact information, I would be able to share that with you. But the thing is, I always like to tell people, when I look at value, my first thing that I always look at is home, my family. Where do I get my last name? Is that a good name or even less than a good name? And when I have these conversations with individuals that say, well, my mom and dad didn't necessarily leave me a good name. What do I do? I don't have value. And I tell them all the time that you are almost not blessed, but almost fortunate that you get to be the first one to establish what that name means going forward. Okay? I want you to imagine all the people here that, have, that come from a long lineage of a, a, a great name and they can't live up to it. Which one do you think is hard to live up to something or to create something? As a gentleman here who has a very strong, domineering, father who has given him more of a quality name than you can ever imagine. I can promise you living, and any gentleman here that, that knows exactly what I'm talking about, even young ladies too, to live up to a standard or to a name is very tough. But, so for anybody in this room that says, my mom and dad or my circumstance did not leave me a good name, you have a blank canvas to create the value in the name that is going to follow you afterward, either with your own children or the companies into which you work for. So never think that you start from behind, but make sure you understand your value first and foremost. 
The second thing is, and I tell people this all the time, particularly young students, here it is, the good Lord gives you three, four, maybe five different skill sets, just attributes that you just happen to be just gifted at. You're just good at it. You don't know why. You just are just good at it. I'm in the way over here. You're just good at it. And then all of a sudden, you go to college or you get married. And the next thing you know, someone tells you that you have to major in something or that you have to be good at one thing. Okay? And all of a sudden, those three to four skill sets you just let go of. Who? And I, I, I really need to know, who told you to let go of those other skill sets that you were just blessed with? Who told you to let go of those things? Believe it or not, those other things that you are gifted at, the second point, volunteer. Put those skill sets into an, an avenue to where you just have to be just gifted at it. And when you volunteer, what does that create? Number one, that creates value for your name. In other words, at your respective employer or even at home, you can't show everything that you're gifted at. Every now and then when you volunteer and you show that other attribute, those other skill sets that you happen to have, guess who takes notice of that? People that pay you. People that pay you want to know, are you more than just a one-trick pony? Believe it or not, even the people who are your bosses want to know, can you do anything more than what I tell you? Good bosses want you to do more than what they tell you. What are you gifted at? Volunteer and put yourself in that situation because what happens is, all of a sudden, you get a chance to learn by standing up instead of always being the person that's the consumer by sitting down. And when you have that, then guess what starts to happen? People start to trust you. People start to follow you. People want to seek out your advice because you, all you did was just volunteer. And remember, when you go back to work, guess what? You have some, something of value to which your boss or your organization can benefit from. Never, ever forget the power of volunteering. Okay, now again, not to get all churchy or anything like that, but y'all heard it said before, time, treasure, talent, right? My treasure is low financially. No, I'm joking. I got you. <laughs> but talent and time. I am more judicious with my time than I am with my treasure. I promise you. But that talent, that I do share. And it's not just in one place. I kind of spread it around. Now, I am kind of careful where I put it at, but I do volunteer work. My other skill sets can be seen. And not only my other skill sets, for my mother and father that have invested so much in me, it allows me to tell their story. It allows me to tell you my grandmother's story. Because if you want to see a smile on my face come up, if somehow I get a chance to tell you about my grandmother that lived to age 99, I promise you, with the, that's the bedrock of my soul, I promise you, the best part about me comes out. When the best things about you come out, people will follow you, okay? The third attribute, to verbalize. Do you know how scary it is to get up and tell someone, I want to raise? Do you know how hard it is to sit there and tell someone is, I want to be the person that articulates the vision or the mission of where we work? I want to be the boss. Matter of fact, I'm glad you're doing a great job, but you are setting it up for me to take over from you. Do you know how hard that is? Do you know how hard that is to verbalize? I said the word hard. I really just lied to you, and you fell for it. <clears throat> it is the easiest thing to do is to let someone know that you have a skill and you want to share it. You are the one that puts yourself in a deficit when you don't want to share it. Again, I asked you earlier, who told you to keep your mouth shut? Who told you that? School didn't tell you that. Your mother and father didn't tell you that. Your spouse did not tell you that. For some reason, we self-contain because we figured I may embarrass myself. Guess what? Leadership is about an embarrassment of riches. Leadership is an embarrassment of riches because guess what? You'll get a chance to fall down and guess what? You know what? It didn't kill me after all. I don't have to file bankruptcy after all. My wife didn't leave me after all. <laughs> I think I'm going to be okay with speaking up. And when you speak up, guess who the, the beneficiaries are? The people that you care about 
the most. Going back to my grandmother, you know what it's like to tell your grandmother three years ago, Grandma, I'm the chairman of the State Banking Board of Arkansas. Okay. <laughs> didn't mean anything to her. She would not let me see the emotion that was in her face because she really didn't know what that meant. But all of a sudden, my picture was in the paper there in the, in the Moss Arkansas paper. Oh, baby! Oh, baby! Oh, my God, you did something! I'm like, yes, I tried to tell you that. <clears throat> but the moral of the story is I had to speak up all the way through when I was in banking. You heard me say, it was said earlier that I was in banking for 20 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not in banking anymore every day. If I had not verbalized that I had other talents when I was there at Merrill Lynch, do you think Philanthropy and the College would have gave me the opportunity to raise funds for them? Because in this new economy right now, you may be good at one thing, and if you're in that, if you're in that economy and that economy changes that quick, what are you going to do tomorrow? Ladies and gentlemen, that's how quick life is. But if you do not verbalize, how do I know that you are gifted at what you said? Okay? Are we good there? All right, let's go forward. Let's see here. I love, I, I, when, I was, when I was a kid, I used to love Batman. Uh, and one, one of Batman's favorite characters uh, was the Riddler. So, with that said, I have a question. Does the leader start the conversation or end the conversation? That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> well, this is a democracy here, so let's try the vote. For all of those who say a leader starts the conversation, raise your hand. For all of those who say that the leader ends the conversation, raise your hand. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Can we do a vote? Yeah, Wait, we have a split decision. Now, the answer to that question, obviously, <coughs> honestly, is both. But here is the very critical narrative that you have to understand. True leadership knows how to articulate the narrative or drive the conversation. For example, the judge, you know that guy that, or the lady that wears that big black robe and walks in and people stand up and then you sit down and you argue your case? What does the judge do? He knows how to articulate the question in the courtroom. For all the guys who are married, it is the wife that knows how to ask the question and that we have to respond to, right? That's not fun. But the moral of the story is he or she that knows how to dominate the questions or dominate the narrative is the leader in the room. Now, there are people out here who will sit there and say, in leadership, it is the disciple. It is the last word that is the leadership. And I have seen time and again, if there is a consensus, if there are more than two people in a, well, three people, two people in a room, and if a consensus our plurality has already, in a sense, come to a decision, then what is the decider really doing? That's exactly right, which is a form of leadership. So when they talk about leadership, and I talk about that big old circle, remember, when someone is a decider in that particular case, understand that's just a pinpoint in the circle of leadership. True leadership is when that decider puts the right people in the room that they can have a good collaborative decision, go back and forth and figure out what it is that they need to do. Okay? A good leader, a great leader, knows how to start that conversation. They know how to start that conversation. Does that mean, does that mean they know where it's going to go and where it's going to end up? To the great ones, no because they seek insight at every interval and every turn. In other words, they embrace diversity. They want people that, that are not from the same pedigree. They're not the same race. They're not the same gender. They're not from the same area. Because when you're trying to sell to a global market that is getting smaller every day, 
If you don't understand the different demographic markets and circles and subsets and things of that nature, how can you put your product out there or service out there that people will buy and support? Best leaders know how to start the narrative and put people in place that allow them to grow to the consensus, even if they are privileged, if they are privileged to have the last word. Y'all get pretty good on that. All right. Let's go forward. We talked about growing leadership. Now, the other the part is this, it's the P. It's to protect leadership. If you are so blessed and so fortunate where people start to follow you and start to adhere to some of the things you say, how do you protect what it is that is your leadership style or your brand? Well, the first thing is, y'all see the word SWOT analysis. Now, is there anyone here in this room that does not understand what a SWOT analysis is? <coughs> Okay, great. And tell us, y'all in the right place. A SWOT analysis, S, strength, W, weakness, O, opportunities, T, threats. In other words, I need to know what is breaking in my favor and what is against my favor, okay? And, and when I go down to this fourth point down here, particularly internal and external, I need to know what is the potential to take me out or to boost me. Now. Does that mean you have to be cerebral and be analytical and figuring things out all the time? No. Do you need to have common sense? Absolutely. I will tell you, going back to my grandmother, I told you I just got to bring a smile on my face. My grandmother had no more than an eighth grade education. But she used to tell me this all the time. Boy, it don't take all day to figure folk out. <laughs> It don't take all day to figure folk out. In other words, she knew what she was good at. Now, even though she didn't, she lacked education, you know what that meant? She became her own entrepreneur. So there in Plummerville, Arkansas, <coughs> in South Conway County, which is Marlton, which is on the other side of uh, Conway, did she, have her, did she have an account there at the feed <coughs> store to get cows and chickens and feed and, and get, had a big old garden for watermelons and corn and all that kind of stuff? Absolutely. Did she have a big old peach orchard? Absolutely. She knew where her strength was. I don't need all that what she did, but at that time, because of a whole bunch of other things, which I'm not going to get into, she said, I'm going to stick right here and build off this one. And that's what she did. But was there a threat, even though she was building off all that land? Yes, because someone, or as they call, the man, could come there and say, you owe us taxes, or you're making so much money, we're going to take some of this, or someone can threaten her safety because her husband, my grandfather, had to work on the railroad out in Kansas because at that time, men could not work sometimes where their wife works. And guess what? That was a threat. So what did she have to do? She had to make sure and tell other gentlemen there in the community to which her husband liked they had to protect me and all my daughters, which is my mom and all my aunties, in case someone tried to do something. And oh, by the way, not to get into the gun debate, but I promise you, if you rolled up on my grandmother's house, <laughs> on the I promise you she would be there to greet you. Yeah. So we don't even want to go there. But anyway, but the moral of the story is she understood that without me telling her that. You need to know that in business and in your professional life. What are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? And it's not, it's not something that you have to go through every day, but every now and then, just take a little time to be reflective. Okay, this is breaking for me, this is not breaking for me. Maybe I need to get a degree, oh, maybe, a, maybe I need to specialize in something, maybe I need to volunteer a little bit more, maybe I need to verbalize, whatever it is, just make sure that you do that, okay? Now, the word here, brand, people use that word like it's like water. Some people understand it, most people don't, okay? This is what I'm going to tell you. If you were to ask me right now, Mr. Parks, what is your strongest brand? When I say the name Parks, I promise you that has brand. Now, does it have a big brand here in Little Rock? Mm, a little bit. But if I go back to Marlton and Russellville, where I actually grew up, to this day, to this second, you glance for it. Absolutely. Does that mean I get a free drink? Sometimes, depending on who it is. <laughs> it starts right there. What is your name? Now, some people, particularly college graduates, we fall for this. If I got a young college graduate, you know exactly what I'm getting ready to say. I can't wait to get that first job because they think buying some, I mean, getting a degree and getting that first check from somebody, that's my brand because I got somebody's lapel on me. That's my brand. Because you know how those people are. They start those conversations. 
So where do you work? I work at Stevens. Where do you work? I work at so and so. In other words, they're so proud of that. They're so proud of that. And there's nothing wrong with what Mr. Stevens has done. But if I ask you, literally, where do you work? I always start the conversation. I, I usually start the conversation. This is where I work, but this is how I earn money. Sometimes it's two different things. The way I earn money is what I'm doing right now. Now, does that mean that's cash? No. Is that invitations for opportunities to speak different places and meet different people and things of that nature? I, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you since I've started to verbalize my other God-given skill sets, there have been as wealth that has been I never knew that my job could have never given me. But have, because of that, have I been able to give back? Absolutely, because I knew what my brand was. Okay? Always know what your brand is, professional and personal, and know how to protect it. Because this comes into number three, analytics. For those of you who uh, are in business and you are in the, I call it the digital space, be it Facebook, LinkedIn, all of that, analytics. Who's looking at you? What kind of history do you get on your website? Where does that come from? Who has an appeal to it? If you don't know the analytics, and there are great tools that allow you to know what your analytics are. You know, when you do a sale on something, is it a certain product? Y'all just see you did furniture, right? Okay. Okay, is it a certain kind of furniture at a certain time of year? Is it consoles? Is it dressers? With flat screen television and all things getting smaller, do we need to do modules? What is working out there? You have to know your analytics, because if you don't, or basically your bottom line, you won't be in business long, you won't be in a position of leadership long if you don't know your analytics, okay? So everyone here that has a, the website or anything of that nature, make sure you know what your analytics are, okay? And oh, by the way, because I'm a former banker, uh, we used to talk about credit, credit scores and things of that nature. And I used to talk to college students and I used to have people proudly sit there and say to me, well, I don't have any credit, so therefore I have good credit because I've never, you know, uh, I'm never uh, defaulting on anybody. I gave a credit because I have no credit. The same mentality about folks out here that's not in the digital space. Ladies and gentlemen, just like that individual told me years ago, because I have no, I have no credit, I have good credit, that's a falsehood. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a professional and you don't have a digital identity and, you're, and, it's, and, it's, not, and it's not the way it should be, you have a hole in your boat. Because if you, it's just like, you know, the tree that falls in the forest. If I Google you, if I Google you and you're not there, in a sense, you're not there. How can I verify that you are who you say you are? Ladies and gentlemen, you, this is a bank, I'm just telling you this. Remember, a banker's whole livelihood is discretion. It's not to share everything. And so when all this technology started coming out, I'm like, I can't let everybody know who I know and what my networks are. That's, that's my secret sauce. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time has shown me that if I do not know how to execute that, I don't exist. And you know what that reduces me to? Someone that has to talk excessively to prove who I am. And remember this one thing when you try to sell. Any salespeople in the house? The more you talk, the greater danger you are of losing the business. Is that right? <laughs> Don't put yourself in that circumstance. And then lastly, the internal and external assessment. I call internal assessment your family, friends, people that know you or people that have transitioned with, with you when you went from one spot of your life to another spot in your life. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, you think those folks are just friends or family, they are some of your key allies. Keep them informed of what's going on. Now, you don't have to give them a play-by-play -play of what's going on, but they're going to be the ones that's going to be the most vocal in your defense. And they're going to be the ones that are going to have you back. We tend to discard family because we're trying to suck up to the big boss or to the big check and things of that nature, and we just discard family. And then all of a sudden, we run on the hard times, and guess what we start doing? <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> You never, you ain't talked to me in six years, <laughs> and now all of a sudden you need a thousand dollars. What? <laughs> to avoid that scenario, keep your family and friends every now and then. 
Treat them like a board of directors. Let them know what's going on because they will protect you. If you're very much involved in the community, don't ever get so far away from the community that you don't let the community know what you're doing. And I don't, I don't have it right here. I'm going to say the word philanthropy. Give back. Find ways to give back. I don't care if it's $100. I don't care if it's $1,000. I don't care if it's part of your services. Give something back so someone will have your back. Give something away. You remember those, all those skill sets that you got? Choose one of those and let that be your philanthropy. Okay? And the external threats, someone, and as soon as you start to make it, someone's going to always try to poach your greatest ideas. Okay? Just know that. And don't be afraid to put it out there, because believe it or not, just, be, just like a book, as I tell people, just because you are well read, does that mean that book is well written? In other words, there's so, there is every form of information out there for you to be successful. Then how come there are not more millionaires? Not everybody can interpret information the same. They're not supposed to. So as they say, as the young folks say, don't be scared. <laughs> Put it on out there. Okay? Next. I hope y'all enjoy this. The other thing about protecting the leadership is you have to constantly educate yourself on new best practices. <coughs> Those things, there's things out there that make your job and your livelihood more efficient. Is there anyone here that's still using an abacus? Okay, great. Now watch this. Is there anyone in here still using fax machines as compared to email? I want you, but don't let me. Oh my God. My point being, my point being, one, I, I did a, I did a, I did a, I did a, there's nothing, here, there's nothing wrong with it, but guess what? I like time and I like making sure I have documentation. Guess what I do simultaneously when you email? I got it both. If I'm still using manual processes such as facts, guess what? I got the information, but guess what? Do I have it in a digital form in case I got to go right back to it? No. Can I search on it like I can do right here on this computer slash phone right here? That's what I'm trying to say. Continue to innovate. What's out there in the marketplace? Every now and then, insult your intelligence and go to Barnes and Noble and just read. What are other smart people doing that I'm not doing? Watch CNBC for an hour and a half or so and see what the conversation is all about. See what's around the bend before it happens and see how you can execute this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a name for you. The name is called Black Bear. How many of you still have it in your pocket right now? Bless your heart. My company said this is the last one because we're all iPhones and I said, then give me about four of them. Because I just work so much better on Blackberry than I can on an iPhone. I don't do all the stuff that everybody does on an iPhone. I email, I type on it, I text. That's what I mean. You realize you just shot me full of holes, right? <laughs> <laughs> But that's fine, but you see, but my point being, you remember how pervasive, you know how you know how big I, I mean, excuse me, our Blackberry was just five, six, seven years ago? And you see how big it's not now. Okay? That's the point that I'm trying to say, and that's how quick the market can move. Okay? Know what innovations are taking place out there. And ladies and gentlemen, the third point is the most critical. Feedback. Do not be afraid to ask how you are doing. And I will tell you. As someone who can get bruised feelings very easy, but I will tell you, my wife has helped me. A marriage can solve all, a whole bunch of no's and negativity out here in the marketplace because you have to know what the feedback is on your service, your product, your deliverables, everything. Your customers will probably tell you a better way of you doing business than you can ever imagine. And I, they're not in your business but they can tell you more levels of efficiency than you can ever imagine. And here's a dirty little secret. You don't have to pay them. <laughs> <laughs> and the question normally is always asked, why would a customer tell you how to do something more efficient? Because believe it or not, if someone is buying something from you, they want to see you make it. They want to see you make it. And they will tell you ways that they think that can help you be more efficient that allow you to make it. Don't be afraid of feedback. Set it up on your website. Make sure you ask your vendors, your customers, 
And every now and then, though you don't want to, ask your family, how am I doing? That's how you protect yourself. Because the more buy-in that you have, not saying that you got to listen to everything that gets told to you, but you have people buying into your vision, buying into your mission. That is how you protect yourself. Protect yourself. In the end, you got to share this. Now, this is where people struggle. I'm smart, I'm making money, I'm doing exactly what I need to do, I gotta hold on to it. Be careful, be careful with that mentality. You may make some money briefly, but you'll lose it quick. Learn, excuse me, I bless you. Learn how to collaborate. When I say collaborate, sometimes it's within the industry and sometimes it's outside of the industry. Why? Because some people are trying to grow vertically, some people are trying to grow horizontally. But if you have those conversations, you can grow insight that allows you to see where the next business or where a pot of, uh, of customers can be for you when you collaborate. Number two, a customer-centric focus. Ladies and gentlemen, without clients, we do not exist. The end. In my business right now, I'm the director of uh, uh, development there at Clinton. My job is to raise money. If I have no students, it's a done deal. I can still raise money, but I won't be raising money for school because there's no school without students. Know how to have a laser focus on the client. A laser focus on the client. And then the last thing right here is to make sure that you have open and transparent feedback. Ladies and gentlemen, that means every now and then, somebody sees you in a public square having a client tell you they didn't appreciate what you did. You know what that does for you when someone else sees that? It gives you the opportunity to show that you can take care of a client. Even though they're not having that, they're, they're don't have the problem, they won't see how you handle it. How many times have you seen a situation that you've had an issue with a vendor or such, and you were just appreciative on how they handled the situation, and because of that, you gave them more business. Or you referred them business, because you know you got an honest broker. But when people can't see how you do things, they can't trust you. And ladies and gentlemen, if you think you can do backroom deals the way it used to get done, you're fooling yourself. Say the word social media. <laughs> That has been a game changer. I can just bring up name on top of name. Politicians, sports stars, you name it. They thought it was in the quad of night, and all of a sudden, it got exploded. Be open and trend. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of. But make sure your processes are open, OK? My time is almost done. But guess what? <coughs> I have something I want to play for. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this. Oh, my favorite show. Oh, man. I thought, we had, I thought we were in a hot spot. Because if you saw that, that was a, that was a thing of the Golden Girls, right? And y'all know this theme song because I was going to make y'all sing it. I'm so, I'm so mad because that was going to be perfect. But anyway, in the song, I just love that theme song because I knew my mom every Saturday night, you know, she made me sit there and watch that show. And I used to, I couldn't stand it until all of a sudden I started to like it because why, as a guy, it was giving me insight on how women think. So <laughs> I used to just love that show, but the theme song I used to sing all the time. And it said, thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true, you are pal and company. And if you had a party, you'll invite everyone that you knew. And you will see that the biggest card attached was for me. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the end, that's what this is all about. Having someone's back, can you just be my friend? Do you want to be a friend? That's all it is. Enjoy everything about leadership. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Your family is depending on it, and it gives you a chance to make the name or enhance the name and the brand that is known as you and your family. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Hold on. Now I'm thinking stuff. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Let's see. I get out of that. I'll just do this and say, there's my contact information right there. Me and that wonderful green chair. <laughs> If you need anything, I have a card back there if you need that. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very kind.